James is such a practical book. This wonderful book that teaches us how to apply God's wisdom to everyday situations in our lives. And so James has been dealing with spiritual maturity, what it means to be a Christian who is walking with God, who has the favor of God upon him, the blessings of God upon him, the man who can face temptations and be an overcomer, the person who learns how to control his tongue. And then in chapter 4 here, James is talking about war. And he says, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? O King James says, from whence comes wars and fightings among you? Don't they come from within even your own lust? And so we're going to, for a couple minutes today, deal with this issue of conflict amongst believers. James is writing to remember the brethren. He's writing to fellow believers that are scattered abroad. And as the church receives this letter from James, no doubt it's a church that has some inside conflict. Already we found in chapter 2 where they're favoring rich people over poor people. They're allowing the rich person to sit on the front row and they're making the poor person sit on the floor in the back. And so there's this conflict in the church. And so James is identifying where does this come from? Where does this war come from? Why is there this carnal, uh, this carnal aspect in the church, the dispute amongst the believers? The last prayer of Jesus that we have recorded in the Gospel of John, John chapter 17, at least five times Jesus prayed that they may be one, even as we're one. Jesus, in these last chapters in the upper room, had said to his disciples, Hereby shall men know that you are my disciples, because you love one another. He said in chapter 17 that you might be one. Why? That the world may know that the Father has sent me, and I am in you, and you are in me. And the world can see the difference, because you love one another despite your differences. You see, the church is not a place where everybody is alike, thinks alike, acts alike, looks alike. That's not the real church. The real church is a church that's multicultural, a church that has the young and the old, a church that has the educated, the uneducated, the rich and the poor. We are so diverse and we're so different. We have different preferences. Yet the church should be a place where we have unity despite our differences. Unity with diversity. That's what makes the real church. If we were all alike, thought alike, looked alike, acted alike, there would be no conflict. Why? We'd all be the same. But boy, how dull that would be. What makes it exciting is I can love somebody who thinks totally different than I think in a sense, looks different, dresses different, walks different, acts different, has different outlook on life, has different vocation, and I can love them and get along with them. Why? Because I am one with them in Christ. So James here is talking about where does these wars come from? What, what is happening that causes this conflict in the church? Where does it come from? And he says, is it not that your passions are at war within you? So he talks about two wars. The war that's going on between believers, oh how sad, and then the war that's going on inside of us. And actually he's saying here in this very first verse, the reason you're at war with the people around you you're fighting, you have conflict, there's no peace between you and others, is because you have a war that's going on inside of you. Boy, does that describe the church today? Does that describe you and me today? Maybe that's the reason we can't get along with our wife, our spouse, our husband. We can't get along with our children, we can't get along with the people in the world around us, the people at church, is because we're not getting along with ourselves. Something's wrong inside of us. And that's what James is going to deal with in chapter 4 here. So I, I just trust you'll bear with me and stay with me these next few days as we look at James chapter 4, answering the question, why conflict? Why conflict among believers? Why conflict at all? And we'll see. God has some answers in this chapter. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. And I pray God's blessings upon you.